morning and welcome everybody it's nice to be able to join you again gosh it's been such a busy week this last week and the weather's been fabulous so um yeah it's been just a joy to have some sunshine again in my previous video on how to make paper mache dolls i showed you how to make the head using a paper straw and some paper clay and also the limbs um, what you would need to do before you do this next step would well I suppose you could do it afterwards would you need to paint them and you can use acrylic paints that I normally just water down and then paint very very simple little features on to the faces such as this one here where you can see that the little facial features are very very basic very naive drawing little legs just with a few spots maybe little ballet shoes and very very simple little arms so that is my format for them keeping them very naive and very sort of whimsy um you're going to need at this stage now that we're starting to assemble these dolls is to make some holes so that you're able to connect the heads with the body that we'll be making just now so for this i've taken a fairly strong needle you can see it's actually got quite a long eye but what you're wanting to do is to make sure that it's fairly thick here so that as you're pushing through it doesn't break because you wouldn't want that to hurt your eyes and then we're going to push through the paper clay and the straw i'm just going to take one of the limbs to work with simply because it hasn't got the weight of the head and it's easier for me to show you so i'm going to mark off a spot here and i'm just going to make a little mark on the outside as to where i go remember with the limbs what we did was we when we worked on the paper straws we had that inside area being hollow and that's actually an advantage because you're not having to push through really really thick um, pieces of clay so i'm now have a thimble on and that might be horrifying to some of you i know a lot of people don't like working with them but it does protect your fingers and i'm just going to use my thimble just to slightly pressure this through and wiggle it a little bit until i got through to the middle you can actually hear it go pop when it actually gets into the middle it's actually quite nice squeezing through the other side and if you're watching carefully here you'll see it's starting to push through the opposite edge there's a little bulge forming just go slowly and then what you can do once it starts to push through on the other side loosen any loose bits of clay there and just simply take your needle and start pushing it from the opposite ends like that that's perfect now you're just wanting to enlarge that and you want to make sure that your needle goes straight through this is very important because we're going to be stitching these limbs to the body and if your needle hasn't have a clear passage through the center where you can just push in from one side and know it's going to go through to the other side it's going to be awfully awkward so don't start a hole on this side and think oh well i'm going to be clever and come from this side try and push the needle straight through so that it actually has that clear path and you'll see on this one that i've already done the same thing applies here we just push it through from one side through to the other sorry i haven't cleared that hole there there we go straight through one side to the other okay so in order to now make the actual body you need to create for yourself a little template so what i did was i took just a piece of card and on the card i measured out this rectangle here which is three inches wide or eight centimeters wide and it's five inches long or 13 centimeters long and then i found the center point which would be one and a half inches or two centimeters so that i could have the center point of the body and very simply what i did was just to draw the outline on one side trace it um, on with a piece of um, with a pencil and then go over it with a dark colored felter pen then if you are unsure about drawing what you could do would be to fold this in half put your piece of paper or your piece of card up against the window where there's a nice strong light showing through and you will be able to see it coming through on the other side and you can simply trace over that so you are wanting to have more or less a mirror image for your body so having drawn the template now onto a piece of card i then just found a rigid fold file um, why can't i talk today <laughs> I was out in the wind earlier, maybe that's had my, blown my brains around. You want to get a sort of firm piece of plastic, something like a rigid 
cover from um, a plastic folder and you can use that to cut out your template if you're only making one doll then a thick piece of cardboard like something with the back of a cereal box would work but I've got a whole series of dolls and I cut this out a while ago unfortunately mine's got a little bit wrinkled but that's okay so you've got your template and now you can use this to trace around onto pieces of fabric and I just simply used cotton fabric, just a piece of calico, it might even be a piece of old sheet. And I've taken my design, um, put my template down, and then just using a pencil, you want to trace around the outside edge of this. So you're going to trace around the actual line of this plastic template. However, when you cut, bearing in mind you haven't got a seam allowance, you want to leave about half a centimeter here so that as you're stitching you've got something to turn in. If you're going to stitch too closely inside here, it's going to make your body very much thinner and you'll have a really, really skinny doll and that sometimes um, doesn't always look that appealing. All right, so then I stitched around the edges and I'm started at the top here but don't start right at the top because quite a lot of this neck part sorry let me get in focus don't start right at the top because a lot of this neck area will be folded under almost to the shoulder level so start about sort of halfway down and stitch all the way down the edges till you get to this point here on your body and this point there because your legs are going to fit in here and um, the arms don't worry about you can just stitch all the way around so let me just get a, a nice pointer that I can show you let's go over this again you're going to start stitching from about here you're going to stitch all the way down until you get to the bottom to about this point so it would be just slightly under where the buttocks would leave this part open because this is where we're going to insert our legs and then you're going to stitch all the way up the other side um, up to about this point here okay you can stitch this by hand it's not a, um, a body that's going to have a lot of pressure or pull on it so that would be fine or if you have a machine you could run it up on there and then turn your little um, body in on itself so you want to invert it and when you have something that has a curve like these seams around here in order to manipulate the fabric you have to make notches so for those of you that are sewers you will know immediately that you have to do this so that the fabric can ease around but these little notches allow the fabric to kind of stretch open if necessary or fold in and you want to snip those around just along the areas that you've stitched okay now we've got that one on the one side that we've already done I've now taken my body and I've turned it inside out you can see this is the bottom area where I'm going to put the legs in and this top area I folded that long neck part in so that I could actually insert this that I made earlier on the head with a long neck that will go inside the body so it'll sit like that the arms get attached to the outside of the body so that's going to be easy to do I like to just make sure that I've got all the edges sort of really well turned so I've just taken the point of a pair of scissors and I'm going to be running those around that outside edge right so the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take some stuffing and you're going to stuff your doll I like to stuff with smaller pieces and then push that in and compact it rather than trying to get a huge piece in because this body shape is really small indeed so just get a little bit in, use the back of a pencil, you could use a knitting needle or even a crochet hook just to get some of this into the body and just take more and more as you need it. If you find that you can't get stuffing, one of my go-to things is to go to um, a shop that sells cushions and loose covers and just buy a cheap cushion and um, open it up. That's really basically the same stuff. So you want a synthetic cushion, not one that's got foam chips just a synthetic cushion obviously if you're making bigger things um, you would need more of it but it's quite an inexpensive way of getting stuffing I did phone um, one of the fabric shops and the price of the stuffing there was actually probably about I don't know at least at least a hundred percent more than that of a cushion cover of similar size so that might be helpful um, depending on where you live in the world okay so I'm going to start and you just start slowly um, and you're going to start by putting your head on first 
and you'll push that into your body before you've stuffed it too full. Try and get the stem or this neck of the of the body uh, into the sorry, get the neck into the body and get it surrounded on both sides by some stuffing. So you can actually push this around here and round the back and along the sides. And then I'll show you on one that I've actually started working on what I've done. So remember I had two little holes here. I've got my folded edge of my fabric and I've taken my needle sorry, and I, with, with the folded edge I push through from the one side to the other and I come from this side over just a little bit so that the stitch doesn't pull in on itself and push through on the other side. So I'm working left to right and then right to left stitching through the neck to the opposite side and then on the neck I actually made four holes so I've got one in the front and one at the back and then I took the stitching from there straight through to the back so I've got stitches from shoulder to shoulder and from the front of the neck to the back of the neck and you'll see that that head is nice and secure and at this stage I've now filled up the body quite firmly with um, some of the stuffing and I've put one arm on so I'm going to jump forward now to that stage so that you can see what to do next Right, so when you're working with the limbs, if you want them to have movement, then it's quite a nice idea to have um, little hinged joints. And I've simply done that by using two buttons on either side of it. This was one of the original dolls that I made, and you can see here that that plastic straw that I use is showing through. But I'm not worried about that because I'm making a sleeve, um, and I'm sure that you might not have done that um, when you've done yours, you might have covered that over, um, but I'm not I'm not phased that this doll is having a sleeve in any case. So to start off with what I've done is I've got a double thread of cotton and I've got a knot at the end and I'm just going to simply stitch through from one side of my side seam to the other. And then I have buttons here, all of equal size. You can see that they're quite nice and small little ones and I am going to just stitch that onto the side of the doll. Right, so I've got that through. I just have four holes, so I'm going to just quickly catch that and come up through some of the other holes. So you can see I've gone across one part of the cross and then I'm coming through on the other side. And then when I come through to catch the arm, it will actually make it much more stable. So I haven't got the button wobbling around as I'm trying to work with the arm. Right, so I'm pushing this through one of the holes again. Now I'm picking up an arm. And so for this doll, she's got these quite quirky little hands. And I'm going to have the hands facing inwards. As you can see here, it faces inwards on this one. So this one I'm going to make face inwards. And I'm going to take the needle from the front to the back. Push this through. Gosh, I sometimes need more hands than we than we realise, hey. Having told you all so nicely how to get your needles through, this one has lost its direction. Let me try it from this side, see if I can open the hole a bit. And don't worry, oh, this hole's very smooth from this side. Sometimes you just get a bit of clay that's caught in the way and maybe you put your needle in at a slightly different angle. Don't panic. It's always a way to make things work. So I've obviously got a little bit of clay in here. I'm just going to loosen this by wiggling my needle around a little bit. That's secure from that side, so why are we not working this side? And it's good for you to see this so that you don't feel flummoxed if it happens to you. I don't want to work this side. What did I do? I was so careful when I had them all out earlier. So we're going to take the needle from the inside edge to the outside edge and don't try and secure it onto the body tightly at this stage. I'm now going to pick up a button and I'm simply going to go through one of the holes on the button and down through the opposite one. The button's there so that you have something to anchor your thread on the outside so that your little doll has movement. And now that I've got it fairly close to the body, I'm going to bring the needle through to the back. 
like so and give it a tight pull so that you can get the button on the outside edge lying snug up against the body then I'm going to push this through the bottom button and trust me you'll probably be able to do this more easily than I am on camera and then I'm going to come back up from the bottom through one of the little holes and then back through my arm so I've actually got a couple of nice strong threads linking it all together it's funny you know when you make these dolls the real fun part is making the bodies and then it's huh, you've got to do all this assembling and then the dressing up is a really nice part <laughs> so I like to do these things in batches so I've come through to the front again and what I'm going to do now is just stitch through once more just to make it extra strong and I'm going to then secure it off bear in mind that when these little dolls are dressed if you are not intending to use them for um, children to play with then you probably don't need that many stitches if you are intending to use for for children then I can actually suggest that you use dental floss to stitch with it's a really nice strong thread so you'll see now that I've wrapped the thread around a couple of times around the bead that's up against the shoulder seam and I'm now just going to make a little knot and secure that off like that really nice and easily and I'm going to take my thread into the stuffing and out again and just snip that off Perfect, so now with my thread I'm going to make a nice strong knot at the bottom and we will start to just assemble the legs. So you'll see with my legs here I have painted them almost to have little ballet shoes and um, I'm going to show you once again that I've actually got holes that go through from one side to the other from the back to the front and from side to side whoopsie like that so when you come to insert these I try to push the, um, the limbs as close to the outside edge of the seam as possible because essentially what we're going to do is we're going to stitch them so that they're lying pretty close together like that and then once they are stitched you will see that the little doll looks as though she's got little pantaloons so what I've done with with um, the one that I've already stitched is I've taken my thread and stitched through from the front of the leg to the back of the leg a couple of times side to side I've moved on to do this one and then I've just done some little running stitches over here and round the back just to secure that so if we look at our little doll when it's actually fully assembled you will see that the little arms are able to move quite nicely this one's quite, actually, when I look at the others, it's quite rough because I made this with proper paper pulp and glue, so proper paper mache. So you've got two little arms that actually move nicely, and the legs don't have as much movement, but nevertheless, they are quite nice and securely stra strapped in, and the little head is nice and secure. And that's the basics of actually getting your body assembled. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is showing you how to actually dress some of these dolls and as I mentioned in my previous video when I was showing you how to make the bodies I have about probably 19 or 20 little bodies to dress up and I'm really really looking forward to being able to share that with you so thanks for joining me today and um, I'd love to hear from you I heard from somebody else that she also makes paper dolls and I could look on her channel and it was lovely to see so we've got kindred hearts there but please share your um, your comments with me and if you enjoy watching this or any of the other crafts that I'm doing please consider subscribing to my channel bye for now